Now the COVID vaccines are known to cause mild and short lasting side effects such as muscle aches, fever and headaches. But there has been reported some serious blood clots that have happened following vaccination. In fact, there's been about 79 reported cases out of 20 million. So this is about four people having blood clots for every million doses of the vaccine given. This is an extremely low risk of having a blood clot after the vaccine. However, you would want to know if you're one of those four people that might have a blood clot of those million vaccines given. Looking at the data, there were 79 cases, 51 were men, 28 were women. Um, there were 19 reported deaths as of the 31st of March, 2021. Of those 19 reported deaths, 11 were under the age of 50 and there were three under the age of 30. So that is quite a young age group. So which means that's a total of 14 out of 19 under the age of 50 that died from the blood clots. Now what I've got here is a list of common questions that I usually ask by people who would like to have the vaccination or those who have already had the first dose of the vaccination and would like to have the second dose. So the first question is, how does the vaccine cause blood clots? Now, there have been reports also with the Pfizer vaccine. I think two reported cases of blood clots with the Pfizer vaccine. However, further investigation have shown that those blood clots were not related to the vaccine. But the AstraZeneca vaccine has been more in the news due to the higher numbers and deaths occurring from the vaccine. So what happens is when you have the vaccine, some people form antibodies that binds to the platelets. This now triggers the platelets to self-destruct which now disrupts the whole clotting mechanism where basically blood clots are formed, which now block the arteries and veins, and this can lead to events such as having a stroke. At present, no one knows what's causing this vaccine to form antibodies in people. I mean, we know that we know that the AstraZeneca vaccine has the um, DNA, which is the adenovirus vector. We know that the Pfizer and the Moderna has the mRNA vector. So the questions are, could it be the adenovirus or could it be the spike protein? Could it be a contaminant? Or could it be something else? Several studies are taking place on what's causing blood clots to form after the vaccine. I'm under 30. Should I have the vaccine? Well, the health regulatory bodies such as the MHRA and the JCVI, which is the Joint Committee on the Vaccines and Immunization, have advised that if you're under the age of 30 and you have no health condition, then ideally you should have an alternative vaccine such as the Pfizer or the Moderna. However, if you're under the age of 30 and you have an underlying health condition that might put you at risk of catching COVID, then it might be beneficial for you to have the AstraZeneca vaccine. If you're over the age of 30, then you can still have the AstraZeneca vaccine. So if these blood clots are so rare after the vaccination, why is there such a fuss all about this? Well, these are all the questions that really needs to be answered because as you can see, it's been reported so far to date was the 31st of March. Now we've been, now we're in, I think, phase two, where basically the vaccine has been rolled onto the under 30s. So what they're trying to prevent is greater numbers of people coming up with blood clots, especially as we've had 79 cases. What we don't want is, you know, have the under 30s vaccinated and then you get 200 cases, for example. So that's what they're trying to prevent. But as of yet, we don't know the full reason as to why the under 50s or the under 30s have increased risk of blood clots with the vaccine. I've had a first dose of the COVID vaccine. Should I have a second dose? Well, you've already received the first dose and you have no major side effects, then there's no reason why you cannot go on to have the second dose of the vaccine, which is usually about three to 12 weeks, depending on the type of the vaccine given. Is it safe to take the vaccine if I'm pregnant and which? Vaccines have not been tested in pregnant women. So if you're to take the vaccine if pregnant, this has to be on an individual basis and you have to weigh the benefits with the risk and discuss this with your doctor. For example, if you are... BMI was over 30 or you had health risks such as hypertension, preeclampsia, um, diabetes, you know, you'll be recommended to take the COVID vaccine because if you caught COVID while you're pregnant, you know, it would be quite a risk, you know, to your health. It's also been advised that, you know, if you're pregnant, you should either take the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine. I mean, it has been said that the AstraZeneca vaccine is also safe to take, but because there is more real world data and there's been no major safety concerns with the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccines. That's what's being proposed at present. And also in terms of if you're trying for pregnancy, there has been no evidence to show that taking the vaccines will affect your fertility. And also, if you're under the age of 30, whether you're pregnant or not, you still be offered an alternative vaccine such as the Pfizer or the Moderna. So I guess the question is, if I'm pregnant, do I really need to take the COVID vaccine? Initially, the WHO, which is a World Health Organization, has stated that if you're pregnant, do not take the vaccine. They then reversed their advice and now said that, look, if you're pregnant, then you should be able to take the COVID vaccine. I had headache after the vaccine. What should I do? 
Well, headaches is a common side effect of the vaccine. They're usually mild and last for two to three days. The headaches that you need to worry about are the serious headaches that you've never had before, headaches that are worse when lying or bending over, they're not usually helped with painkillers, they've been ongoing for more than four days and within 28 days of taking the vaccines. You should be calling your doctor about this. How do I know my symptoms might be due to a blood clot? So there are a whole host of symptoms that might indicate if they're due to a blood clot. So as I just mentioned, any severe persistent headaches lasting for more than four days. And sometimes you might get associated symptoms such as blurred vision, nausea, vomiting, weakness, dizziness, as well as chest pain, shortness of breath, abdominal pain, leg swelling. And this usually takes place within 28 days of the COVID vaccine. I mean, what happens in this case? In this case, if you speak to a doctor, most likely they'll be sending you to hospital because you need to have some blood tests done to see if this is indeed a possible blood clot from the vaccine. So what kind of blood clots have been reported with the vaccine? Well, the most common case at present is called cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, otherwise known as CVST, which is basically a blood clot to the cerebral veins in the brain. And 56 to 87% of people with CVST recover from this condition. You can, of course, have other blood clots to the abdomen, also known as splenic vein thrombosis, and arterial thrombosis, such as having a heart attack, also known as a myocardial infarction. And this usually presents with low platelets. I have had previous blood clots or low platelets. Can I still take the vaccine? Well, again, it's been advised that a history of blood clots does not stop you from having any of the COVID vaccines. And also a history of low platelets does not stop you from having any of the COVID vaccines. What we're looking at here is a different mechanism by which blood clots are formed following, following the vaccine, which is different from the other blood clots, as these blood clots have been found to be associated with low platelets. So if you do have a past history of blood clots or you have any inherited clotting disorders, what they're looking for is do you have any low platelets that might stop you from having the COVID vaccine? I take the contraceptive pill. Can I have the vaccine? Well, most women, as you know, take the contraceptive pill for contraception or other reasons. And usually when you take the contraceptive pill, you're at higher risk of having blood clots. However, taking the vaccine does not put you at any higher risk of blood clots than you already are from the contraceptive pill itself, simply because, as I mentioned earlier, the mechanism by which you have blood clots from the vaccine is different from the mechanism by which you have blood clots from the contraceptive pill. Have side effects of the first dose of the vaccine. Can I take the second dose? Well, usually the most common side effects you get from the vaccines are your headaches, fever, muscle aches, you know, just feeling generally tired. And these are usually self-limiting and can last for two to three days. So of course you can go ahead and have the second dose after three to 12 weeks. I had an allergic reaction after the first dose. What should I do next? Well, this depends on the type of the allergic reaction. You know, most people commonly have allergy reactions such as localized swelling or localized reaction to the arm. Now this usually subsides after a few days and it is okay to have the second dose. The kind of allergy reactions we're talking about are serious anaphylactic reactions such as chest pain, shortness of breath, swelling of the lips. You know, you might feel that you're, you can't breathe or that your tongue is swelling up. These are serious reactions that you need to let your doctor know and they would actually advise you not to take the second dose until this has been further investigated as to determine what the cause might be. In this case, you might be referred to an allergy specialist for further advice. Now, with the Pfizer and Moderna, they contain this compound called PEG, which is known as polyethylene glycol, which is commonly found in certain types of medicines, foods and household products and some people can be allergic to this. Also the AstraZeneca vaccine has another compound called polysorbate 80 also found in foods and household products and it has been found that people who are allergic to the PEG can also be allergic to the polysorbate 80 as well. So who should avoid the vaccine? Well, anyone with the history of what we call heparin-induced low platelets, where basically some people have received the heparin injection and the heparin has triggered antibodies to bind to the platelets, which now triggers the destruction of the platelets, whereby you have low platelets and you have um, formation of blood clots, similar to what happens when you have the vaccine. So anyone with a history of antiphospholipid syndrome with low platelets. Also anyone with a history of heparin-induced low platelets along with thrombosis. So thrombosis is another name for blood clots. And also if you've had um, blood clots after the first dose of the vaccine, then you should not be taking the second dose of the vaccine. So basically, I hope this is all clear. I hope I've been able to explain more about the COVID vaccination and the blood clots. There are four of studies going on. The advice is constantly changing all the time. So you could find that the information I've given you might change in the next week or in the next couple of weeks. So hopefully I'll be able to give you further updates or any more changes. So if you like this video, please share and subscribe to my channel. Take care.